Today, we'll be investigating this setting. Follow sound distance is actually exactly what it says, but also doesn't function how you'd expect. I'll also be talking about the player chunk a lot. So let me give you a quick crash course on what the player chunk is. The chunk is a 200 by 200 tile zone centered on the player. Objects within this zone are actively rendered and interactable. It's essentially the play zone of Project Zomboid. Now this play zone also has a 10 by 10 tile dead spot centered on the player. Now, PZ only renders active sounds within this area, and because of that dead zone, the loudest possible sounds you can generate from the player will theoretically have a sound range of 95 to 105 tiles, depending on where you are within that dead zone. Next, let's start with squashing some preconceptions you might have when you first look at it. It isn't how loud something is, how far away you'll attract Zeds, or how loud meta events are. It really is just how far a Z will follow sound. Well, specifically one type of sound. Buckle up, because to better understand everything, we need to learn a little bit about general sound mechanics. Now to elaborate, there's two categories I'd place sound in. One being active sounds, generated within the player's chunk. These are sounds made by your TVs, your radios, player gunshots, shouts, Z smack against walls, doors, and windows, etc, etc. The other being overworld sounds. These are the distant gunshots, the screams, uh, thunder, and so on and so forth. These sounds are controlled by the sadistic AI director and fall under meta events. These are typically used to shift large amounts of Zeds around the overworld outside of the player's chunk. These two categories don't really have much overlap. It does seem that Zeds within the chunk will attempt to shoot path towards meta sounds outside of the chunk, but it cancels for some reason. Zeds moved by an overworld sound will not path through a chunk to reach the source. They will, however, enter the outskirts of the chunk if drawn into it, and then they'll start their activated mechanics. They're grouping, following other rendered sounds, and just actively looking for players. The only exception seems to be the heli event, but I kind of think this deserves a separate video and more testing. It's the same idea that sounds within the player chunk won't attract Zeds from outside the chunk. Anything outside the chunk simply isn't rendered and exists with a different rule set. We can see this with an ambulance. I've turned on the sirens, I've marked out 200 tiles just to be safe, and I've spawned in a Z at the 100th tile. 100 tiles takes you to the very edge of the player chunk. So as I teleport to the 100th tile, you'll notice that the Z isn't being attracted by the ambulance. As I move below the 100th tile, you'll now see the ambulance sound render and the zombie path towards the sound. This is probably also why the JS2000 has a max sound range of 100 tiles. So, that begs the question, if an unrendered tree falls in an unrendered forest, does it make a sound? Probably depends on whether it's a meta event or not. Alright, now that our cups runneth over with the knowledge of noises, what is follow sound distance actually doing? Well, it's doing exactly what it says. Simply, it adjusts the distance over world zombies or unrendered zombies will follow a meta event noise. Let me show you with some moving pictures. On the left, we have a follow sound distance of 100. On the right, we have a setting of 1000. We are using equal zombie distribution because this paints the best picture as to the full effect of a meta event. As you can see, with a setting of 1000, those Zeds get real nice and tight like heading towards the center of that meta event compared to the setting of 100. Yeah, that's all this is doing. I've also went ahead and verified that this setting doesn't affect anything in the player's chunk. A setting of 10 will not see Zeds in the chunk only traveling 10 tiles towards a player generated sound. Alright, so how can we use all this information to enhance our Project Zomboid experience? First of all, this is the single most effective way to move zombies around the map. My initial loose idea is pseudo super hordes. Maybe this even plays into a The Walking Dead scenario. This setting, when getting close to max, can pack thousands of zombies into a cell. Let me display this for you. The meta event affects this many cells. On a stock population setting in urban environments, you'll typically see 500 give or take 100 Zeds per cell. Now, 
The perceived limitations here are that meta events only seem to happen within proximity to the player. So if you're in Moldra, you won't see anything taking event up in Louisville. So if you travel a long distance quickly, you probably won't see this happening in further to reach locations at least initially. The next limitation is that it can take a couple days for the groups to pack in tight once a meta event is triggered. Maybe it's not too much of a limitation though, as stumbling across wandering zombies can mimic that wandering horde feel. Hopefully, this gives you a rough idea of how to play with this setting. All right, well, that's been my TED Talk. If you think I'm wrong or have missed anything, let me know in the comments below. Really want me to cover another sandbox setting? Let me know which one. And if you like somebody else's idea, give it a thumbs up. If a bunch of people want one setting covered, I'll go ahead and change course and focus on that setting to get it out to you guys. Stick around, more guides and future scenarios on the way.